large-scale structures created by human hands, with the help of modern technology, can sometimes amaze the whole world. Huge moving constructions resembling iron wings, where each component is the size of the Eiffel Tower, are certainly capable of capturing the imagination. Meislankering is not just an installation to attract tourists. It is part of the extensive storm surge barrier system called Delta Works, which has become one of the seven wonders of the modern world. But have the Netherlands really been able to control the sea? And for how long can they defy nature? Watch in this video. On a cold January morning in 1953, the passenger ferry Princess Victoria left her home in Scotland never to return. 133 people became victims of the storm in the North Sea, but this was only the beginning of the catastrophe, which became the worst natural disaster of that time. The 1,000-kilometer storm field continued its movement deep into the Northern Sea. The terrain features and the tide exacerbated the bad weather. The wave hit England and Belgium, but the Netherlands suffered the most, as the majority of the country's territory is below sea level. The water level rose almost six meters above average, and the protective dams couldn't hold. Significant areas were flooded on both the islands and the mainland. This weather phenomenon claimed the lives of 1,836 people. The storm destroyed 47,300 buildings and caused serious damage to infrastructure and agricultural lands. This tragedy is still remembered in the Netherlands. Immediately after the event, the Netherlands reconsidered their coastal defense methods. To control the elemental force of water, Dutch engineers decided not to fight against it, but instead learn to manage it. As part of the Delta Project, the country established a network of barriers to protect against floods and preserve the necessary freshwater supply. Construction has been ongoing for more than 40 years. The Dutch are building a new system of dams that allows regularly flooded areas to be drained. The largest dam is being created between the islands of Schuwen Dublin and Noordbevland, the Eastern Scheldt Storm Surge Barrier. Its length is nine kilometers. More than 60 huge sliding gates are capable of closing the entire Eastern Scheldt within 75 minutes. Initially, sluices were not included in the design, but they were later installed to preserve the aquatic ecosystem. But that's not all. The original plan of the Delta Project did not include any structures around major port cities. This list included Rotterdam, which needed to remain accessible to ships. Ordinary dams couldn't guarantee this. The safety of Southern Netherlands remained in question. However, the engineering genius of the Netherlands did not even think about giving up. They needed to create a movable dam capable of closing the channel during storms, and they found a way. The plan involved creating large floating gates on both sides of the channel. The Meislankering, each door is 210 meters wide, 22 meters tall, and 15 meters deep. The superstructure near the city of Hook of Holland spends most of its time on land, significantly simplifying maintenance. The gates took six years to build, costing 660 million euros. This engineering marvel was designed to accommodate unforeseen climate changes on our planet. In good weather, these doors are fully open, providing passage for ships up to 360 meters wide. The Computer Water Resources Protection Bureau system monitors water levels and wind data. If a storm surge of three meters above the average sea level is expected, the automated dam program comes into action. The gates start moving towards each other, closing the waterway. When the gates meet, they fill with water and descend to the bottom within two hours. Due to storms, the mechanism has closed only twice in over 20 years. But every year before the storm season, tests of the construction's technical readiness are conducted. Europe's busiest port, Rotterdam, is situated six meters below sea level, and all residents can rely on are the strength of these barriers. One of the project's features is that it cannot be classified as dams or locks, but cleverly combines the qualities of both structures. Meislankering is also the world's largest moving mechanical structure. The storm barrier covers areas of the country located six meters below sea level, where nearly five million people live. When constructing the gates, it was also taken into account that every 100 years, the Netherlands sink into the sea by another 20 centimeters. These gates once acted on alert, in 2007, a serious storm was expected. The gates were closed for two days. There was no flooding. The barrier completely justified the funds invested and the hopes placed in it. The dams not only protect against sea storms, but also block water arteries. Dams, while protecting against floods, narrow the river and make the water flow faster and higher. This creates a narrow passage, leading to additional flooding upstream. In 1995, the Dutch saw the shortcomings of the system when faced with the flooding of the Rhine. 
Due to heavy rains and melting snow in the Alps, floodwaters inundated low-lying areas. This led to the initiation of a new program called Room for the River, which was in effect in the Netherlands until 2018. The project aimed to create new controlled spaces where water could flow in case of a flood. The country began reshaping the landscape to accommodate potential inundation. The history of this plan proved to be quite controversial, as many people did not want to relocate because the area planned for flooding serves as an emergency water spill area. Nevertheless, room for the river received approval from the authorities. As part of the project, farms and previously built dams were relocated from riverbanks. This freed up space for water collection in low-lying river valleys, which turned into reservoirs and habitats for fish and waterfowl. In the event of a flood, it will serve as a natural reservoir for water, only the road will remain dry. During normal times, it is a park with pedestrian paths. Such strategic retreats not only reduced the risk of flooding, but also allowed for the reorganization of settlements, making them denser and more resilient to natural disasters. Due to the melting ice masses, the ocean is increasingly taking over new territories. According to studies, by the end of the century, sea levels in the Netherlands are expected to rise by one meter. Certainly the country has achieved a lot in flood prevention, but what if the water still gets out of control? There's a solution even for that scenario. The Dutch are planning to float along with their homes. The first pilot project in this direction was a floating pavilion consisting of three connected hemispheres. It is a fully self-sufficient structure with a heating and cooling system based on solar energy and surface water. In this new aquatic world, there's also a place for cattle, such as a floating farm. There are 35 dairy cows here, and you can buy milk from them right on the spot. The animals eat grass from football fields and don't mind the leftovers from the local brewery. They drink filtered rainwater and use electricity from a nearby floating solar power station. While people in Hollywood post-apocalyptic movies struggle to survive in the new world, real Dutch cows are ready to comfortably face the worst-case scenario due to global warming. Over time, the concept of dealing with natural disasters in the Netherlands has undergone several changes. The idea of taming nature, which led to the construction of numerous dams and barriers, and the narrowing of lakes, and the redirection of rivers, has gradually faded away. With the rising sea levels, the same Meisland carrying super gates might need to be closed once a year. And this happens very often, where one such event costs the port 10 million euros in lost revenue. That's why the country is now trying to coexist with the future world. After all, if you can't stop something, lead it. The Dutch are giving land back to nature for wetlands and creating new environmentally friendly structures for living on water. Dutch hydraulic engineers have managed to control sea levels while preserving the natural habitat for hundreds of plant and animal species. But the Dutch don't plan to stop there. All these strategies are just some examples of the technologies and projects in the Netherlands related to water resource management. The country continues to explore new methods to improve the resilience of its cities to natural disasters. Surrounded by protection from the sea, the residents of the Netherlands feel much more safer Write in the comments what you think about this mega project in the Netherlands. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Kara Show channel. Goodbye.